Hey guys, Scott from Fright Props here, and today we're going to be taking a look at our electric lid opener mech. The electric lid opener mech is designed to mount inside of a crate or a coffin, anything with a hinged lid, and open and close that lid. When you order the mech, it's going to come with the motor itself, the inverted bracket, as well as this linkage, and the bracket that mounts to the lid. It installs just like you see it here with the uh, inverted bracket attaching the motor to the side of the coffiner box, the linkage arm, and the uh, second bracket attaching to the lid. When this motor arm spins, it's going to push this linkage, which is going to open and close our lid. You can adjust how far the lid opens either by moving where the uh, motor is mounted inside the box, physically moving it farther up or down or closer to the pivot point, the hinge, or you can lengthen the linkage. Uh, there are different lengths of the linkage available, so you could have a longer linkage. Or you can move the second bracket closer to the linkage point, which will also increase how far the lid opens. This kit can be ordered with or without a controller, and we're going to show it in operation without a controller first. As you can see here, the motor included with the kit comes with five wires. The function of the different wires is listed on the sticker that's applied to the motor. So our red wire is our positive. We have two negative wires, a blue and a green. Blue is for the fast speed of the motor, and green is for the slow speed. So you can actually select a fast or a slow speed without using a controller. You just either use the blue for fast or the green for slow. The yellow and black wires are for the parking function of the motor, and we'll cover that later. So in order to show how the mech would work without a controller, we're just going to go ahead and take our power supply here. We're going to insert our red positive wire into the center of the barrel plug, which is the positive connection. And then by touching either the green or the blue wire to the outer shielding here, we'll be able to power the motor and demonstrate the different speeds. So if we touch the green wire to the outside, it'll show us the negative speed. And you can see that uh, the uh, motor will just continue to run and constantly open and close the lid as long as power is applied. That's how this will function if you don't have a controller. Whenever you apply power, it's just going to continue to go up and down. And whenever you cut power, it's going to stop. It doesn't matter where it is, it'll just stop as soon as power is cut. Let's go ahead and uh, apply the fast wire so we can see the high speed. You can see it's quite a bit faster. And again, whenever we withdraw power, it's just going to stop. This is good if you just want to create a prop where a lid is constantly opening and closing over and over again. You could also apply a speed controller if you wanted to change the speed, dial it down even farther than the slow speed. Of course, to get the most out of your lid opener mech, you're going to want to use a controller like this PicaVolt. I'm going to go ahead and install the PicaVolt uh, on this mech and we'll demonstrate all the features of this great controller. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed the PicaVolt. In order to do that, we just simply connected the uh, motor wires to the PicaVolt as per the motor terminal here. So we have our positive going to the plus. We have our fast negative wire going to the negative. We want to do that so that we make sure we can utilize the fastest speed of the motor if we need to. And then we have the yellow wire going to park so that we can use the park function of the motor. On its most basic level, the PicaVolt is a speed and direction controller. So if we just power the PicaVolt up and turn the dial, we can start the motor going in any direction we choose, and we can set the speed. We can go fast, or we can dial it down and have it go slow. So you could just use the PicaVolt to set the speed of your motor if you wanted to create a prop where the lid opens slowly. Of course, the PicaVolt can do much more than that. The real advantage to the PicaVolt is that you can actually program in a sequence of movements, opening and closing, motor speed and direction, and you can actually trigger that sequence with one of the two trigger inputs. Using the PicaVolt also lets us take advantage of the parking feature of the motor. Our motors include a parking feature, which means that once the uh, motor has reached a certain factory set point, it can be told to stop so that you can actually program a sequence where the motor will stop uh, at the same spot each time, which will allow us to have the lid stop closed each time our triggered show has ended. So let's go ahead and walk through the setup of the PicaVolt. The PicaVolt has several options to choose from, and we're going to go ahead and show you the options we're going to be using for the setup with our lid opener here. All of the options are shown in the quick start guide. You can go through and read all the different options you have available, and we'll touch on them briefly as we go through the setup here. 
In order to enter the setup mode of the PicoVolt, we just need to hold down the red record button on the top, plug power into the unit, and release the record button while the green light is flashing. We've now entered the setup. The first of our options here is the output mode. You can choose a number of different output modes depending on whether or not you want to utilize the park function of a motor, or if you want to use the unit uh, without a park function, or uh, if you want to use it for LED lights. So if we turn the dial on the top of the unit, all the way to the left, you can see that the LED will blink once. That tells us that we've currently selected option one, that's default. If we turn the wheel slightly to the right, the LED will start blinking twice. That's output option number two and so on. We can go to three, four, and five. So this is how we select the different output options. As I said before, output option number one is default. That'll just be if you're using a motor and you don't want to utilize the park function. Output number two is called transition mode. Transition mode basically allows the uh, PicoVolt to transition smoothly between different animations. So if you have multiple programs or uh, if you want to transition from your uh, triggered program to your ambient show or speed and you want that to be a smooth transition, you would use transition mode. Number three is park. And number four is park slash break. These two are functionally the same, but in the uh, park mode, the motor will kind of gently coast into the park position. In the park brake mode, it will stop uh, pretty much immediately once it reaches that park position. And the final uh, option is the uh, LED light mode. We're not going to be using that today, obviously. For this demonstration, we're going to use option number four, the park brake mode. So we just move the dial to the left until the LED blinks four times and we tap the record button on the top of the unit. You'll see that the LED is blinking yellow now, which tells us that we're in the input mode selection. In this uh, section, you can actually choose how the two trigger inputs interact with each other. There's a few different options for different scenarios. We're just gonna go ahead and turn the dial all the way to the left so that the LED blinks once. That's the default mode. In this mode, neither of the two trigger inputs is interruptible. That essentially means that once the uh, show for trigger input one is playing, even if you hit the second trigger, if there happens to be one, it won't stop that show. It'll just continue to play until that show is done. Uh, the same is true for the second input. If you have another show on input two and you have that one going and somebody hits the trigger that's attached to input one, it won't stop. It'll just continue doing its show until that show is over, at which point it'll open itself up to either of the two triggers. So once we've selected number one for default, we're going to go ahead and tap record again. And the PicoVolt will go ahead and save those changes. And the first thing you'll see it do is actually move to the park position. So you saw there that when we finished selecting our modes and options, because we're using a park mode, the motor actually parked itself, which meant the arm continued to rotate until it reached the factory set park position. In order to make sure that our lid stops closed, we've already made sure that in the park position, the arm and the linkage are in the correct position to hold this lid closed. If you're finding that in the park position your motor is open, all you need to do is take the nut off of the arm here and rotate the arm, which will pull the linkage as well, into the correct position so that the lid is closed, and then tighten it back down. You'll see also that it now appears like the PicoVolt has become unresponsive. If we turn the dial, nothing's going to happen. That's because if you're using the park feature as we are here, you want the motor to start in the park position each time it plays its animation. You don't want the PicoVolt to start its animation when the lid is not closed because then you're going to end up all out of sync with your lid kind of all over the place. Uh, so uh, this ensures that the uh, motor will always start from its park position, which is what we want. So we're now ready to record our animation. What we're gonna wanna do is have the lid open, stay open for a couple seconds and then close. And it's important to remember that like other peekaboos, the uh, PicoVolt does all its recording in real time. So ho however long you want to hold the lid open for is how long you need to leave it open for during your recording. It's also important to note that in order to utilize the park feature, we're just going to set the speed of the motor as it goes towards its park position and tap record. We don't need to bring it all the way back closed. You'll see that when I do the actual recording. That's because the PicoVolt will know that once it shows over, it needs to return to the park position. So if we actually bring it farther than the park position, it'll go all the way around again and open and close again, and we don't want that to happen. 
In order to record, we simply hold down the record button on the top of the PicoVolt until the LED starts blinking red and let go. Now we're in record mode, so we can actually control the motor, have it open, hold it there, and then have it continue to close and tap record. The PicoVolt will save our program. We can test it by tapping the play button. You'll see the lid open. It'll pause for however long I paused when I was doing the recording, and then it will close. And the PicoVolt will bring the motor back to park and stop it. You can attach almost any type of trigger to the trigger inputs of the PicoVolt. Here I have a push button as a demonstration. Uh, I've wired this into the number one input of the PicoVolt, which is where we just recorded our show. So I can go ahead and press this button and it'll play back our show. Remember that if you want to change how long the lid stays open for, you just need to do it in real time when you program your PicoVolt. Just hold the lid open for as long as you want it to stay open whenever the unit is triggered. The PicoVolt has a maximum of 85 seconds of animation per input. So the longest that we could have the lid held open for in this configuration is for around that 85 second mark. If you need to create a prop where a lid opens and stays open for an indefinite amount of time, we would suggest using a linear actuator for that. All right, so that is a look at our electric lid opener mech powered by a PicoVolt. If you have any questions, of course, you can leave a comment on this video or send us an email at sales at Thanks.